Last year, I reviewed every single horror movie from 1981 to celebrate the 40th anniversary of one of the best years in horror cinema. I covered popular films like An American Werewolf in London, Halloween and Friday the 13th Part 2, as well as cinematic masterpieces like Possession and Suddenly in the Dark. I also covered the terrible films like Burial Ground or Home Sweet Home, Forgotten Classics, Hidden Gems, Gory Films, Boring Films, I covered them all, or at least I thought I did. And just when I thought I was done talking about 1981, more movies come to my attention. And one of those movies that I overlooked last year was 1981's Demonoid. So where does it rank among the greatness of 1981? Well, let's find out together. Welcome to the Hellbound Horror Show. Demonoid was directed by Alfredo Zacharias, who is the same director that brought us Bees, starring John Saxon. Demonoid was originally made to be two separate films. We have the Demonoid version, which was intended for American audiences. This version upped the gore and the violence. Alfredo also made a foreign country's version of the film called Macabre, which was mostly the same film, but scenes were shot differently to reduce the violence and the gore. Now, the foreign market at the time were more into films that the whole family could watch together. Both films used most of the same footage, but instead of cutting the American gory version to pieces, they shot separate scenes with the intention of releasing two versions of the film. Now, I'm going to review the demonoid version tonight because I'm a glutton for gore. The macabre version of the film is missing the entire opening sequence, which is a real shame. The opening establishes the story in a brutal and gory way. In Demonoid, we open on a cult and a fight breaks out. A girl with a super powerful left hand is kicking cultist's butt until they chain her to the wall and then... Well, that's one way to disarm someone. <laughs> They take the demon hand and they put it in this little coffin thing and they lock it shut. Centuries pass and a miner and his wife stumble upon some mummies with the left hands cut off, as well as some ancient ruins under the mine. In the ancient ruins, they find the coffin of the hand and they decide to bring it home with them. In a drunken stupor, the husband opens the coffin, releasing evil dust. Well, the evil dust takes the shape of an evil hand. The hand attacks a couple in bed, and eventually the evil hand transfers its evilness into the left hand of the husband. Now that's a handy trick. The husband, now possessed, blows up the mines with workers still inside, and then he goes to the most evil place of all, Las Vegas, and then he gambles away his life earnings. But evil is really good at crap, so he instantly becomes a millionaire and all recent millionaires have marks on their backs. So an evil couple kidnap the husband and try to steal his fortune. The evil hand takes over and kills the bad people. In a desperate attempt at staying in control, the husband tries to cut off his own hand, but the hand has other plans. It douses the husband in gasoline and it sets him on fire. <laughs> The hand hides in the sand to protect itself from the flames and, hey, look, there's someone in the shot that shouldn't be in there. Hi. The wife, hot on her husband's trail, teams up with a priest and they find the burial site of her husband, but when they get there, they find the grave empty. The husband, or rather the hand, is still alive and its next victim is a police officer. The hand jumps from person to person trying to connect itself to the wife. The priest and the wife work together to try to put a stop to the hand of the devil. It's funny to see different trends in the year 1981. We have a ton of slashers released this year as well as birthday themed horror films. We also have two killer hand movies. It's not a genre that I see very often, so it's strange that Demonoid and Oliver Stone's The Hand came out in the same year. Director Alfredo Zacharias claims that it was all coincidental though. Zacharias came up with Demonoid after talking to a psychiatrist who lectured on good and evil personalities within ourselves that we battle with every day. The director heard about the hand of the devil and how in some cultures, the left hand was deemed sinister 
And then it all clicked. When the hand possesses a person, their evil side takes over them and we get demonoid. I've got a hand demonoid this. It's a fun premise and it never takes itself too seriously. It's a bit goofy and that's okay. There was some highlight moments for sure and some fun gore and practical effects, but other moments dragged and felt slow. Some highlights and plenty of lowlights make for a very middling film, and that's the perfect way to describe Demonoid. It's no lost classic, nor is it a pile of garbage. It's competent enough and it feels professional, but it's very mediocre. Forgettable. Vinegar Syndrome has a wonderful Blu-ray and DVD combo pack available, and the transfer is to die for. What else do you expect from Vinegar Syndrome? The disc comes with both versions of the film, an interview with the director and some trailers and TV spots, but that's about it. It's a fine Vinegar Syndrome release, but it's not must-own worthy. Maybe I'd appreciate the movie more with a better look of the behind-the-scenes struggles of the film, but with the knowledge that I have now, I can't fully recommend this movie. Watch it if it looks interesting to you or if you just love killer hand movies. Madison? Uh-oh. They should take care of things pretty handily. Ha <laughs> ha